If you want to make your website look attractive, you need to know CSS. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about CSS basics by building a card component. There could be two main parts. In the first part, we're going to build from scratch the card component. And in the second part, we're going to go through the key takeaways that we learned from building the card component. So be sure to check out the description to get the link to the design. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get started. All right, so let's open Visual Studio Code. In the folder of your choice, let's create a new file and name it index.html. In here, let's type exclamation mark and press enter. Now we have the HTML template. Our job is to build a card component that has an image, tags, names, description, and a button. And you can find this design with the link in the description. And in the design, you can also find the image URL. All right, so let's head back to our Visual Studio code. The first thing I want to change is the title. Let's change it to be CSS basic. And inside the body, I want to create a new div with an ID of container to hold the card. And inside the container, I want to create a new div with a class of card. And inside the card, the first thing we want to have is the image. So let's say image. The source is going to be this. So let's copy it. And for the alternative text, I'm going to copy the title. All right, so to see the changes, let's open live server. Now we see the image. The next thing we want to add is the tag. So after the image, let's create a new span and give it a class name of tag. And the first tag is going to be nature. And let's copy it. And the second tag is going to be lake. All right, so after the tag, we want to have the name. So let's go to new div and give it the class of name. And this is going to be the name. And after this, I want to go new uh, paragraph. So with the P element and the content is going to be this so let's copy it all right so the last element we want to add to the card is a button so let's say button here and the content is going to be read more all right so i think we now have all the element that we need and let's move on to the CSS. The most common and useful way to bring CSS to our web page is to create an external style sheet. So let's create a new file and name it style.css. So let's say we want to select all the image element. We can do so by saying the element name, uh, following by the opening and closing curly bracket. And inside the bracket, we can add the style we want. So let's say we want to give the image with a uh, hundred percent so that it does not take the original width anymore so let's do so and in order to see the changes we need to go back to the index.html and import the style sheet so inside the head element we can do so by saying link uh, css and now if we press enter and save it you can see that the image now only take 100% of the parent element. It does not have the original width anymore. And with just one line of code, the image now is responsive. The other way to bring CSS to our web page is to add style under the style element. So in the head element, we can create a new style element. And in here, for example, we want to select all the images and give it a width of, let's say, 50%. You can see now that if we save that, the image take 50% of its container. You also notice that the style that we add in the style.css has now been overwritten by these lines of code. And the reason is that these lines of code are the latest CSS. So for example, if I move this under this, the style in the style.css will be applied as this is the latest CSS. All right, so let's remove this and let's go back to our uh, style.css. Uh, in here, the next thing we want to do is change the body color. So let's select the body and let's say background color. And let's copy the background color from Figma. 
All right, if we save that, you can see the background color has now changed. The next thing I want to do is to change the font. And to do so, we need to go to font.google.com and we're going to search for railway as it is a font that we're going to use. And let's select that. We're going to select the medium font and the semi bold font. And to use the font, we can go here. The first way to import the font is to copy this link element and paste it inside the head element. And for the second way, we can go here and copy this style of code and paste it in our CSS. I prefer this way more as font is related to CSS. So let's go back here and remove this. And I save that. And in order to use it, let's copy this and paste it in our body. And if we save that and go back to the web page, now the font has been changed. All right, so the next thing I want to do is to select the div element that has ID equal to container. And I can do so by saying hash container. For the container, I want to give it a max width of let's say 300 pixel. And I also want to center this container in the middle of the screen on the horizontal axis. And I can do so by saying margin equal to zero out two. For now, you just need to remember it, but in the future video, we will get to know more about margin and how to center element. And the next thing I want to do in the container is to add some white space above it. So we can do so by saying margin top, uh, let's say 20 view height. So it's going to be 20% of the view height. And one way to visualize it is to go here and right click, select inspect and select this icon and make sure that you have responsive. Now we can freely resize the screen. And for example, if I make the view height be smaller, this space is also going to get smaller. All right, so that's for the container. Let's move on. Next, I want to select the div element that has class equal to card. And I can do so by saying here dot card. And for the card, I want to give it a background color equal to white. And I want to add some padding and it's going to be 8 pixel. And you can see here that there is some white space here. And next, I want to give it some border radius. So the corner would be rounded. So let's say here 12 pixel. All right, so now you can see here the border is now rounded. All right, so next let's add some border. Uh, we can do so by saying here border one pixel and solid. And we can go to Figma and copy the color and paste it here. All right, let's save that. Now you can see there is some border. Uh, now I think we are done with this class. Let's move on to style the image. We already select the image over here. So in here, I can say uh, border radius. I want to give it 12 pixel as well. And I want it to have a height of, let's say, 214 pixel. All right. So now the image is distorted. And to fix it, we can say here, object fit to be cover. And if we save that, now it is fixed. All right, so after the image, we want to select the tags and we can do so by saying dot tags. And it's going to select all the div that has class equal to tag. And for the tag, I want to give it some padding. And if we go to Figma, select this text and then hover on the border. We can see that it has padding top and bottom equal to four and then the padding left and right equal to eight. And to achieve that in here, we can say four pixel. So top and bottom four and then eight pixel left and right eight pixel. And we save that. Now we have some space, uh, but in order to visualize it better, we need to have some border. So let's say border one pixel solid. And then let's go here, select this and copy the color. All right, if we save that, now we have it. And we want to have really rounded corner. 
And one way to do that is by saying border radius and let's just give it 50 pixels. All right, looks good now, but the text is now quite big. So I want to say font size equal to 12 pixels and then font weight is going to be semi bold, which is 600. All right, it looks good now. And let's also go back to Figma and select this and copy the color of the text. And in here we can say color and the value. All right, it looks good now. And I think now we are done with the text. Let's move on to the name. And let's select the name by saying dot name. And for the name, we want to increase the font size. So let's say font size here. And let's go to Figma again and copy the font size. It's going to be 24 pixels. And the font weight is going to be 600. All right, looks good now. And now we want to have some space between the text and the name. And to do so, we can add some margin top for the name. And I'm going to give it 16 pixel. I save that. All right, it looks good now. And for the description, it is the P tag. So we can select it by saying here P. And we're going to change the font size to be 14 pixel. And then we also want to change the color. And let's go to Figma and copy the color. All right, let's save that. All right, looks good. And let's also increase the line height here. It is quite difficult to read. So in here we can say line height equal to 150%. All right, looks much better. And I think we're done with the description. Let's move on to the button. So let's select the button by saying button here. And in here, because button has a default style, and it has some ugly border and we want to remove it. And we can do so by saying border to be none. Let's save that. And then let's also add some padding and let's go to Figma, uh, select this text and then hover on the other element. It's going to have padding top and bottom equal to 12 and left and right 24. So let's go here, padding 12 pixel, 24 pixel. Let's save that. All right, looks good. And then we want to add some border radius as well. It's going to be 50 pixel, the same trick with the tag. All right, looks good. And then we want to have font weight to be 600 pixels. 600. And then the color is going to be different. So let's go here, copy this and paste it here. All right, looks good. And I also want to change the background color as well. So let's go here, select this, and copy this, and paste it here. All right, let's save that. And we also want to center the button in the center of the card on the horizontal axis. And we can use the same trick that we use for the container. And we can say margin zero power two, but now if we save that, it will not work. The reason is that the button by default is inline block element. And in order for this to work, we need to have a block element. So in order to fix it, we can say here display equal to block. And if we save that, now it is centered. All right, the next thing I want to do is to add more space here, like in the design. And instead of selecting all the small element and add space, we can go back here to the index.html and we're going to create a new div. And I'm going to name it card detail. And I'm going to copy all of these elements and paste it inside. And now if we select the card detail, And for example, if we want to give it some padding and top would be 16 pixel, right 8 pixel, bottom 8 pixel, and left to be 8 pixel. And if we save that, 
and now it looks much better and it looks like in the design and the last thing i want to do here is when i hover or focus the button should have some kind of indication that it is being hovered or focused and we can do so by in here saying button when it focus or when it hover then we're going to uh, let's say change the background color and the color and this is going to be background color and then the other one would be color and if we hover that now it works but I also want to add some kind of smooth animation so to do that in here we can say transition to be all uh, 200 millisecond is in out and now if I hover it it works like expected and it is a clickable element so in here I also want to say cursor to be pointer so that whenever we hover it the cursor would be the pointer cursor all right I think now we are done with the card component to summarize what we have learned let's go through the key takeaways first apply CSS to HTML there are three ways to apply CSS to HTML. First, using external style sheet. This is the most common and useful way, and it can be used for multiple pages. The second way is by using internal style sheet. It is common when you have to work with a system that blocks external style sheet. And one downside is that it cannot be used for multiple pages. And the last way is by using inline styling. It is not a good practice, it is difficult to read and understand, and you should avoid using it as possible. It is common when you have to work with an restrictive system. The second takeaway is CSS rule set. To select and style an element, we need to have a selector and the property that we want to style, the value of the property. These are called decoration, and it should be inside the curry bracket and the property should be separated by a column and it should end by a semicolon we also get to know some of the selectors first we have element selector it is used to select all element of the specified type for example we use element selectors to select the image the paragraph and the button and next we have id selector it is used to select an element with the specified id and it should be unique and in the example, we use ID selector to select the div with the ID of container. Next, we have class selector. It is used to select one or more element with the specified class. In the example, we use class selector to select tags and the name. And lastly, we have the pseudo class selector. It is used to select element with the specified state. For example, we use it to select button when it is hovered or focused in css is all about boxes you can imagine that every element is a box and it consists of padding the space outside the content border lie outside of the padding and the margin space outside the border we use margin to add empty space that pushes other elements away in the example we use margin to add some space above the card as well as center the card in the middle of the screen and we also use margin to push the name uh, away from the tags. You can set margin top, bottom, left, and right, or you can use the shorthand like in example. And next we have border. Uh, border used to add border to the element. In the example, we use border in the card component as well as in tag component. You can set border top, bottom, left, or right. You can also set border width, for example, one pixel, border style for example solid and you can also set border color or you can use the shorthand like in the example lastly we have padding padding is used to add space between border and the content in the example we use padding in the card component and also in the button component you can set padding top bottom left or right or you can use the shorthand like in the example so that's it for the video if you want to help me out don't forget to subscribe to my channel Follow me on Twitter and check out datanutrients.io. Otherwise, stay happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye.